And this is the Battle of Champions, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant WBO Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the blue trunks with white trim, weighing in at 135 pounds, undefeated with a record of 13 and 0, 12 KO. It's 1992. Olympic gold medal champion comes to us tonight from Los Angeles, California, East LA to be exact. Ladies and gentlemen, the current WBO junior lightweight champion of the world, the golden boy, Oscar De La Hoya. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with green and white trim, weighing in at 134 and one half pounds. His professional record, 53 victories, 35 by KO, against six defeats with four draws. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mexicali, Mexico, he's the number one ranked WBO contender, the former featherweight champion of the world, Jorge Marromero Paez. All right, I'm supposed to both fight us in the dressing room. I'm partial again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Jim, last weekend, a former Olympic gold medalist from Nigeria, Robert Langola, died here in Las Vegas in the aftermath of a fight. It reminds us of how dangerous this game can be. And it also reminds us that sometimes, after such an event, officials can get very touchy and try to end fights very fast. We'll keep an eye on the activities of referee Richard Steele as Jorge Paez begins the first round stalking Oscar De La Hoya. Now, George, Paez is an unconventional fighter. He may be open a lot of the time, but he's so off rhythm that you may not be able to find him when he's open. That's right, but you can cut all of that off if you make him be the aggressor. You can do a lot of clowning things, backing up, but coming forward, you can only do one thing, leave with your head clowning. For the moment, De La Hoya seems determined to allow Paez to be the aggressor. Will Paez take the bait? It appears he's going to be cautious, at least at the start.
from De La Hoya. Another left-hand shot landed inside by Paez. De La Hoya lands a straight right, not a lot behind it. Now a right uppercut at the end of the round is De La Hoya's best punch at the center. And as we go to the corners, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Watch out for the left hook. Be careful with the left hook. Left hook down and more angles. Use more angles. Try to hide from this guy a little bit. He's, he's scared. The man's scared for me. Hey, David. Tell him don't walk straight in. Use the hook. Escape this guy. Beautiful. Nice. Jim, before this fight, I mentioned that I thought that De La Hoya had to start to modify his aggressive style, and we saw him doing that in the very first round. A little bit more defensive, wear the fight, other fighter down, and then take him on later in the rounds. He's walked out into some big punches early in fights, and he's learned something from it. De La Hoya sticking with the jab in round one. Oscar threw 51 punches, and 36 of them were dead. Seems to stagger Paez momentarily. De La Hoya follows with a flurry. Another left hook and down goes Jorge Paez. Three, four, five, six, seven, He's not going to get up. Nine. Oscar De La Hoya with a second round knockout of Jorge Paez, who had only been knocked down once in 63 previous fights. We just saw the image and the pendulum swing to the other side. He fought brilliantly because he was, he had modified his style, he was cautious in the first round, and he seized the opportunity when he saw it. 49 seconds of round two, George, two spectacular left hooks. The thing about it, he got them not within the exchanges of punches. He just picked his time, threw his punches, there weren't any exchanges. He did it properly. So he showed a patience that he hasn't been able to show before. Good defensive left jab to set all of that up. Great. Back tack. Short, beautiful left hand, and now he's smiling. Well, it could not have gone better for those in the Oscar De La Hoya camp. And now the memories of those two knockdowns against De La Hoya in the first rounds of two of his last three fights begin to fade a little bit. This was just the kind of performance he needed to re-enhance his credibility. And no doubt many of those who are cheering now are the ones who were chanting Jorge, Jorge in the first round. The great thing about it, he got a second round knockout by not being the aggressor. He was on the defense most of the fight. Then the opportunity presented itself. He went for the finish, missed a lot of shots, but he threw a lot of shots. You know, particularly you know, good because when Paez fell, he fell on his neck. There you go. Uh, Richard Steele was blocking your vision just a little bit as Oscar landed that finishing left hook. There's that one. was the shot that hurt him. It wasn't the last one that got him. When That's you right. see a fighter fall on his neck as Paez did, you, he is hurt. It was the first left hook that set up all of this, and then the second left hook there That's put the man down. And he did it spectacular by using jabs, going back. Paez needed room to clown, and he just took away his own room by being the aggressor, thinking Oscar is afraid of him. There's that left hook. He's got great technique on the left hook, doesn't he, George? He stands square, and he believes in his power. When a guy has power like that, all you got to do is believe in it. Let's go up the ring announcer, Michael Buffer, for the official particulars on the second round, De La Hoya knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele reaches the count of 10. The official time, 39 seconds of round number two. The winner winning his second world title, the new WBO lightweight champion of the world. 